Perfect, that shows we're live. So I'm just going to double check before kicking us off. Turn that light on. All right. Well, good afternoon, everyone. We are back with our next candidate. As most of you have already been aware, I like to give a short, very, very short housekeeping rules so that folks are aware of how we are running these um, candidate forums. I am Juliette Abdel, President and CEO of the Westminster Chamber of Commerce. If this is your first time on our page, please be sure to hit that like and the follow. My counterpart today is Alberto Garcia, former mayor pro tem for the city of Westminster, strategic advisor to the chamber, of course, and legacy award recipients uh, for 2019. He is a pro business, pro community member, and we appreciate you being on here with us, Alberto. Thank you. Of course, our candidates provide a quick intro as to who they are and why they are seeking the office. They'll then have the 30 second rapid fire questions that have been pre-submitted to us. Their 30 seconds begins once they start answering the question. Toward the end of the broadcast, I will make a call out. If you have a question, you can type it into the comment section so that we can address it for you. And then we'll round out with closing statement from the candidate that we have. And that will traditionally be how we run the for format of this forum, but we do appreciate if you share with us any compliments or comments along the way so that we can recognize you for tuning into the broadcast. I already see Councillor Bowles on here. I see our board uh, chair, Brian Dice, who has uh, shared with us. Thank you for coming on here, uh, Rachel, today. So with that, I will transition and have our state senate candidate for District 19, Rachel Zenzinger, share a few words. Oh, thank you so much, Juliet. I really appreciate it. Um, it has been my greatest honor to serve the citizens of Senate District 19 these last four years. And together, I think we've been able to achieve quite a bit for Westminster. But rather than read off my resume or the number of bills that I've passed, um, I just like to focus on three things that I think I bring to this position. Um, and those qualities are that I'm bipartisan, I'm effective, and I'm accessible. Those contributions and um, characteristics have um, produced dozens and dozens of endorsements of my candidacy that I've received from organizations that really sit on a wide spectrum of, uh, of politics uh, from every industry group that does business in Colorado, in fact. Um, groups that may seem quite opposite from one another have endorsed my candidacy. For example, I have the endorsement of the Colorado uh, Chamber of Commerce, the state chamber. I also have the endorsement of the AFL-CIO, Labor. I have endorsements from environmental groups such as Conservation Colorado, as well as oil and gas groups such as Noble Energy. Now, do these groups all love me because of uh, every bill that I've passed? No, uh, they love me because they know that I'm collaborative and that I work really hard to find reasonable compromise. I've been a friend to business and I look forward to the conversation today. I've muted myself. I usually don't like to interrupt with side comments, but we're getting a lot of love for you. So I just wanted to pull that up. Um, Councillor Bowles has shared a good morning message uh, to you, Senator, of course, to Honorable Alberto Garcia. We also have Wayne Anderson, who's sharing a quick hello. And we have our Mayor Pro Tem, Anita Sykes, sharing hello to you, uh, Senator, as well. Now we're transitioning back over into our rapid fire questions. Thank you for your opening statement. These are 30 seconds that you have once you begin to answer the question. This first question, of course, is related to the business community. What experience do you have um, in terms of business? And if elected, how will you draw from that experience to aid in our economic recovery? Well, it's been my pleasure uh, to work alongside you and the other chambers of commerce down at the Capitol. Um, I very much enjoy welcoming your group when they come to the Capitol and sharing with you uh, my work. Um, I have been named the most business friendly legislator in my caucus. And in fact, there was just an article that was written about me by the Denver uh, Business Journal about my leadership um, in business issues, in particular, my moderating influence. And so um, I very much look forward to bringing those qualities back to the state Senate uh, in the coming years. Thank you. This question asks what you believe the biggest challenge facing our state is. Well, right now, I would say it's recovery from COVID. Uh, that is definitely the, the issue that I think is most pressing. Um, we have significant budget challenges because of COVID. We have significant health challenges. And it's really impacted every single sector of our community. So um, in my opinion, I think that right now, that is the most pressing issue. 
And so while you are running for your very own personal reasons, likely, how will you also listen to varying views of residents in your district and work for those taxpayers? Well, that is also something that I'm very much known for down at the Capitol. Um, I have a 100% bipartisan record, and you don't get that by not listening to people. In fact, um, I, I've garnered a very strong reputation uh, down at the Capitol for listening to all sides and bringing to bear um, criticisms or concerns that people may have about legislation, and then working to try and find solutions to those um, comments and so that we can all uh, rally behind legislation that represents everybody. In these trying times, as you've indicated with COVID, what can elected officials do to support local businesses? Well, I um, had a listening session with the business community, with your chamber, as well with the Arvada Chamber of Commerce, just so that I could get a better sense. Um, instead of me coming up with the ideas, I really feel that it's important to listen to the business community and figure out what it is that they need from me and then get to work. And what are your biggest challenges that you have in this role? I think um, most of my challenges are probably on a personal level, not a professional one, because this job is very taxing. It's very tiring. Um, it's a lot of stress. And so sometimes that will spill over into your family life or into your personal relationships. And so for me, my biggest challenge really is uh, learning how to say no a little bit and learning how to leave my work at the Capitol um, instead of living it 24 seven. Yeah, and that's tough. <laughs> what if anything would you change with how the state has responded to COVID? Well, I think in the beginning, it was just so new. Um, so we probably made some mistakes, not understanding where this was going or, or how to respond. Um, and in particular, I think I've had a lot of concern around our interactions with our um, nursing homes and um, those types of congregate care communities where the virus has had an outsized impact. And so that's an area that I think I'd like to focus on more that the state can definitely improve upon. Thank you. Who do you most respect from the opposite political party? Um, I have a lot of colleagues um, that I work with across the aisle, and I think um, Senator Don Corum, who's from Montrose, uh, is where I grew up as well. And so um, he and I, we really click together. I really respect his point of view, and I really appreciate um, how we are colleagues to one another. He also has the best jokes down at the Capitol, <laughs> and I think uh, it's good to make friends with people who, who have a sense of humor. Absolutely. So our county, our state, and even our country is presently divided. Can you give an example of a time that you've worked together with people of varying viewpoints to accomplish something positive? Um, I do it all the time, actually, pretty much on every bill, <laughs> every <laughs> bill that is contentious. Um, that is uh, almost uniquely my role, um, which is to work to bring people together. I would say that uh, most recently it was probably around transportation uh, because people see that issue and that problem very differently um, on different sides of the aisle. And so I think it's really important that um, we just get in there and we learn to listen to one another and then respect people's positions. Thank you. We're transitioning to some questions from the audience. If anyone has a question, please type it in. This question comes to us from Brian. He's asked it of a couple of candidates, and we hear a lot about the constraints of Tabor and Gallagher. How have you approached the state budget within those constraints? Um, absolutely. So as a member of the Joint Budget Committee, it is my responsibility to pass a balanced budget. And uh, whatever those constraints are, they are constitutional. And so therefore, I'm going to live up to those. And that's exactly what I've done um, the past two years, not just as a bystander, but very intimately as a member of the Joint Budget Committee. Um, you just dive in there and you figure out what is important and you prioritize those things and then you make hard decisions. Thank you. We now have 30 seconds for your closing remarks. If you would please share with the audience why they should consider candidacy further. 
Well, I just really appreciate this opportunity. And um, if people have more questions about my candidacy, if they want to take a look at the number of people that have endorsed uh, my candidacy, they can go to my website, which is rachelforcolorado.com. Again, that is, this has been the greatest honor of my life to be able to serve the citizens of Senate District 19. And I truly hope that I can return back to the state Senate. Um, I have been a friend of business during my time in the legislature. In fact, I was named the most business friendly legislator of my caucus by the Denver Business Journal. And I really hope to continue to um, bring that to bear as your state senator. Well, thank you so much, Senator, for being with us and giving us insight into yourself and answering some of these questions that were thrown our way. I appreciate you. And of course, I appreciate all of you for staying in tune with us and understanding more about each of our candidates on Jeffco and Abco side, and of course, our state house and Senate. Have a wonderful afternoon, and we will hop back on here with another candidate momentarily. Thank, thank you, you, Senator. Thank you so much.